Yes, welcome back to Family Matters. I'm your host, Petunia King Dillon, and my guests this evening are Pastor Wilma Phillips, Pastor Richard Lord, and Pastor Aldrich Kerr, and they are all from Jehovah's um, House of Praise, which is located in Lowlands, Tobago. And their telephone numbers, respectively, again, Pastor Wilma, 267-3412, Pastor Lord, 737-0420, and Pastor Kerr, 357-3008. And our topic this evening is the agony of divorce. And before we went to the break, we were talking about people who marry for different reasons, people who come from different homes and backgrounds, and people are not living according to God's will for them. Many a times people go and marry and they did not speak to God. Even though they go through counseling, they did not take the time to go before God themselves to ask God, is this what you want for me? Is this the person for me? And sometimes we really get into problems because I have seen where people have gone to counseling before they got married and just after they got married and their lives in their home is a living hell and you wonder what is going on here what is happening to people and knowing that God stands for marriage but a lot of people who get married, they stop going to church. How can pastors get involved in the lives of families who are married to change the concept that if you don't have Christ in the marriage, you have no marriage? Talk to me, pastors. Talk to the viewers. It's a serious case we have here today, you know, because it is hurting. Yeah, yeah, and it is, it is, it is really sad. Uh, you know, I believe, I honestly believe, that um, even though Pastor Richard has said that people, they go for wrong reasons, they enter into this marital place. But I think I want to believe that the majority, they, they, they went into it with good intention. Okay, you, you get married, and you tell yourself, is for better or for worse, until death. And somewhere along the line, the thing is, okay, they are courting. They are courting. And everything is going well. But from the time children start coming and the bills start piling up and everything is like, they just, they just can't handle it. And you're asking, how can the church help? Um, most of the time, the church, the, we don't even know what's going on because they don't come to church and when you ask either they are too ashamed or whatever to say I'm having problems the husband on the other hand would not even he would not even voice it because I was reading somewhere where they had um, a whole lot of couples they would be um, lecturing them and stuff and the person who had the host you know he was saying okay form yourselves into groups let the couples form themselves and touch one another. In other words, intimacy. The husband must hug his wife and show intimacy. And one of the husband, the, the, somebody saw the wife crying. And when they asked, it's because the husband was roughing her up and said, this foolishness that the churches have about you, you know, calling sessions like these and showing inter intimacy in public, as far as I'm concerned, I'm the husband, this is for your bedroom. You understand? Mm -hmm. So the wife ended up crying. And she only stayed because she was embarrassed, you, you know. So it's um, if they don't, if they don't. Sometimes I believe they don't ask for help. It's difficult for you to come because most times they don't even say what the problem is, unless sometimes it is 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 on the verge of breaking up. Or sometimes you know, you see the children. Most of the time, it's the children that's affected, and then someone will come and say, "Well, so and so," and then you're calling for counsel. And most of the time, it's too far gone. They were separated or they had in a new divorce court, you know. But what I think that we need to do is the, the sermons that we preach in church, mm -hmm. the sermon must be geared a lot more towards family Amen. and a relationship. 
and how you must treat each other and how you God must says. You, and how you must work it out and there is no perfect marriage you know problems right. will arise and when problems arise how to deal with it you know and you know and and seek help you know so i believe the sermons must be geared a lot towards the family as a whole because you see in the home you have a, 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 a rate of where husbands don't know how to speak to wives and wives don't know how to speak to husbands and then you have the children now where when it's a time for correction you have the father might say let the mother do it the mother might say let the father do it and then the children would play the parents and one of the reasons why it's difficult, uh, Minister, P Minister Petunia, you will be very surprised what goes on beh behind the closed doors. You find couples will be at home and they will be going at one another, yes, going at one yes. another. And these same couples will come into church and they will sit there so sanctimonious, you won't even think because the something wife is cannot happening. Speak of you the know? husband mm -hmm. and he would look at her mm -hmm. in a, with an eye mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. vice versa mm -hmm. because you have women who mm -hmm. rule husbands and yes. husbands mm -hmm. who rule men. Versa. Mm -hmm. who Mm -hmm. women. And most of the time, these people, they are elders. They are up there, you know. That's so right. they wouldn't, I mean, if I was an elder and I'm, I'm having a problem, I wouldn't come and tell Pastor Richard, I cannot control my home, you know. Men have this thing about them, this pride thing about them. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't want anyone, most times it will be the wife, you know, yes. that, will, that will let it out, you know, not the man. And even if you ask the man, even if you're here and ask the man, he will deny it. Yes. You know, so how do you, how, how does the but church in a situation? Here, I would yeah. love the men to answer. Men, what are men doing wrong? No, there are various things that could go contrary in a marriage. The Bible tells us, be not unequally yoked together as unbelievers. Mm -hmm. And... We, will, we may look at it from the standpoint where we are speaking of being a Christian and a non-Christian mm -hmm. and you get married. That is a very... And most of the time that happens, eh? It's very disastrous in that area. But there are other aspects where two people mm -hmm. are seeking to get married and one loves the Lord. The two of them proclaim that they are saved. One loves the Lord very dearly and the other one He's just barely there. He goes to church. And he doesn't but it, doesn't the Bible say that you can pray, pray for the unbelieving person and bring them in? The husband or the wife? The unbelieving husband is sanctified by the believing wife. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean necessarily that you bring them in because when a person is set in his own way, mm -hmm. he's set. Mm -hmm. Only God can change him. So I'm saying this to say that one person loved the Lord dearly and the other, they are just there. And you cannot connect properly. So there is a problem there. One is spiritual and one is not so spiritual. So even if you decide to pray for that person, they are already set in their way where they believe this is supposed to be so and it's not so. And we find sometimes most people don't delve deep into the word to understand what God, God requires is Hallelujah. Of, a, of marriage. Amen. Because I know of people get married today and by tonight. <laughs> I have known cases like that too. They're gone separate ways. Mm -hmm. I, I, I know of Two people getting married, one goes to church, the other doesn't, and he has a woman outside, and they are in the church, the ceremony is going on, and the woman is outside, and she's saying, what are they doing this so long with my mother, let me kiss him out. Situations like this, the marriage is broken before it even it starts. Started, yeah. right? So, in most cases, we tend to look at the man, because the Bible says the man is the head yes. of the wife. Right? But may I say mm -hmm. that there are some women you cannot get around to them. 
That's a fact. They are set in their own way. That's a fact. And irrespective of what you may try, only God could help you. Going back to the to what was stated before, they got married for the wrong reason. And some of them just getting married to have safe sex. Mm. Pastor Lowell. You know, this indeed is a, is an extremely uh, difficult topic. I mean, there, there's so many questions yes. surrounding this I these issues. But I remember it was Miles Monroe that was saying that um, I think it was in his church. He had there was a department, yeah, he had where young couples will come when they come to church. They would the elders. Mm -hmm those who are known to have had good marriages. Yes. But Kongsu will teach, will show the younger ones how to live. Mm. So that, and, and he reported that there was, um, I think if I remember clearly, there was almost no divorces. Yeah. So we understand all the problems. We can, we can list out all the uh, different circumstances, yes. wrong reason, um, not understanding certain things, financial pressures, we could list them out. And if we dwell on that, we will never find a solution on that. The, th the answer lies really in the Word of God. Hallelujah. It lies in, the Bible talks about the, the how the women the elder women oh, yes, the should women. that's right there are principles inside of, I, I come back to the word principle <coughs> there are principles inside of the word that show us how to live Amen. and if it is to the extent that we are really enforcing that now <coughs> irrespective I'm, I'm not saying you could save all marriages I mean I'm, I'm not yes, saying that yes but I'm saying if you if you if there is an occasion where you can purposefully um, lay hold, especially, I'm talking about those who are coming in your assembly. The yes. question was like, what can the church do about it? Yes. So we know that these are couples. And we, we know really, and we're talking here, maybe as um, pastors before alluded to, there are people uh, that have had many years in, into the thing. And even they might need also to have some degree of counseling, degree of training, degree of uh, looking at their lives again, what are the circumstances. There's so much bitterness sometimes that has happened in the past. What does the Bible talk about forgiveness and deliverance and all the issues? It is solvable through the word of God. Amen. So that it, but it is to the extent that we are able to apply it. It, 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 in other words, we have now come to the place where we recognize it's a serious issue. It's an issue that is not an easy one. And how do we tackle it? We must. You know, you know what I think? The word love. How do we understand the meaning of love? What God says love is. Viewers, we have to go to another break. When we come back, we are going to deal with love in the marriage that can save the marriage. The love of Christ and the love of husband, wife, and children. Love. We'll be right back. <laughs> 